What's up everyone? So as promised in the last video, I said that I was gonna explain the design process behind this piece right here. So let's get right into it. I'm Jay, this is JBV Creative. Let's learn how to create. Before we start, I wanna give a shout out to the people who are making these projects possible. Things like this require iterations to get them to work well, and I wanna make sure that I'm doing the iterations so you don't have to. So that's where I have to give a huge shout out to digitmakers.ca for providing me with all the filament I need to make these projects happen. Digitmakers has a huge selection of filaments, 3D printers, and accessories. So whether you're a beginner or you're a 3D printing vet, they have everything that you will need to keep your printer running. All right, let's get to it. Like all engineering projects, there was a few constraints that I had that were very important to the design of this project. The first constraint was it had to be fully 3D printable. I want people to be able to download this and print it without any additional tools or screws or fasteners. I want this to be so that anyone can make it. Another thing was ease of assembly. So this whole thing took only six minutes to build. Whenever you're designing something, a mechanical system like this, you always have to think about how you're gonna actually physically build it because if you don't and like, you know, you make it impossible to get a, a part in or something and you can't build it, then even if it theoretically will work, if it looks like it's perfect in CAD, it doesn't mean that it's actually gonna be perfect in the physical world. So that was another thing that I had to keep in mind. It had to fit on most standard printers. So this base couldn't get any bigger than this really. So that was another constraint. But then once I had all those constraints figured out, I just had to break it down to what do I want it to do and how do I get it to do that? So what ended up happening was I had to break it down into three separate parts. The first thing was the drive system and the conveyor. The second thing was the candy dispenser. And the third thing, which might've been a little bit unnecessary, but I really wanted to challenge myself to do this, was this system right here that decouples this part from this part. And I'll explain more about that in a little bit. To cover the first constraint, I had to figure out how to make this so you don't need any additional tools to put this thing together. So one of the first things that I did was I designed snap fits so you can push these components into the base and it would hold it in place. Normally with other projects, I'll use screws and I'll screw everything in and it's really secure but obviously for the, the constraints that I was trying to follow, I couldn't do that. So in designing the snap fits, I had to design some test parts to test the way that these snap fits go together. I wanted to test different thicknesses of legs and different clearances. I ended up finding a combination of all of these things that worked and it actually works quite well. You, these things are, are in here and they're not coming out. One of the other design for print features of this piece is the C-clamps that allow things like this handle to be in place, quite secure, it's not moving anywhere, but it still allows it to spin. And that is fully due to these C-clamps that just snap into place. So with those things figured out, now it was time to do all the mechanical work. And the first thing I did was designed the conveyor belt pieces to snap together. Luckily from a past project that I was working on, I already designed the snap together chain. So I was able to just adapt that to get it to work as a conveyor belt. I added some flat, parts to the top of it so the candy wouldn't fall through. But other than that, I used the same sprockets from the last piece and just extended them out. One of the keys to getting this to work is that the distance between the teeth and the sprockets match the distance between each one of these cross beams on the conveyor belt links. And what that allows you to do is, as the sprocket turns, the teeth fall perfectly in these gaps between each one of the cross beams. And that effectively propels the conveyor belt forward so I decided that to get the motion to transfer from this side of the machine to this side, I could just use the conveyor belt as a chain, similar to the way that a bike chain works. And that would allow me to then get the rotation on this side without having to add any additional gears. The next thing that I had to figure out was the dispenser system. And this took a little bit of YouTube research, we'll call it. I watched countless videos of different dispenser mechanisms from like grain hoppers to logging machines to just regular candy dispensers. There was a lot of different ways I could have gone, but I liked the look of this. So that was, that was the decision made, just simple as that. So the way it works is it slides back and forth and every time it slides back, some candy falls into this hole right here. And then as it slides out, the candy drops onto the conveyor belt. And as I mentioned earlier, the whole thing is driven by the belt. In designing this, I needed a crank. It works similar to a car engine 
in that the crank is turned by the piston. In this case, the, the crank is turning the piston and the piston is this sliding dispenser piece. So what I did was I figured out that I needed a certain distance to move back and forth. So the crank had to be a certain size. And then I put this gear here and then built the structure after to make sure that it would hold the gear in place. It was kind of working my way backwards from the end and it, it turned out quite well. It's actually sliding way better than I ever would have imagined. And that brings us to the third design challenge for this piece. And that was if there's candy on the conveyor belt and you wanna clear the conveyor belt without dispensing more candy, you can't because everything is connected. So as I turn this, this part turns as well. So the only way to get the candy off the conveyor belt is to either take it by hand or there had to be a way to maybe decouple from this side to this side. And that's where this came in. As soon as you push that, now you can turn this without this turning and you can clear the candy off the conveyor belt. I was really pumped about this. This was probably the biggest challenge of this whole thing. It took me three days of just thinking about it to figure out how to do it. Again, more YouTube research was done. And what I ended up on was th this mechanism right here. And ultimately what it does is when you push this in, it takes this shaft and pushes it out of this gear. So this shaft right here has this hex on it and the hex is coupled into this gear. When you push this back, it pushes the hex out of the gear and that allows the conveyor belt to freely spin without engaging that gear. The reason why this was complicated for me to figure out was because it needed this sleeve right here. And this sleeve had to be able to engage the shaft in and out while allowing the shaft to still spin. I put this together to see if it would work. And when I realized that it was working, all I had left to do was just commit, print the whole thing, and just hope for the best. And the best came. It worked better than I could have imagined. This is probably one of my favorite pieces that I've ever made. Just because of the challenge, because there was moments where I was like, I want to do that, but I have no idea how to do that. I've just learned over time that if you think about a problem long enough, eventually you come to a solution. And that's what happened here. Thank you guys so much for watching. I plan to do a lot more videos like this where I explain my design process. If you have any more questions, I love this stuff and I'm, I love talking about it. So feel free to ask me anything in the comments below. There's a lot more videos as always coming. So if you're interested, hit the subscribe button. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.